welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the auto ranging feature on this uh, Primary Arms PLX128 compact. Okay, so this is a, uh, a platinum series scope, first focal point, first focal point. So this is a $1,500 scope, and it's got the aerial precision mount, which brings the price up to about $1,600. So there's a feature in here, and I'm going to show you a printout that allows you to auto range off the size of a person. Now, at the end of the video, I'll actually have you guys try and look through the camera. I, I, I spent quite a while trying to get the camera to focus. The problem is that the camera wants to focus on the lens instead of on the image. So I was just having a hard time, but I should be able to at least catch one still. Uh, so anyway. But when you look through the scope and you zoom in, okay, you see this image here. Okay, now that's in that's in eight power. When you're in one power, you see this, which is basically a duplex reticle. Okay, and then what happens as you zoom in, you're zooming in over here. This other stuff here basically goes falls out of your field of view, and you're focusing in over here, and you see this okay so the part that we're talking about today is the it's basically auto ranging off the size of a man so that's this stuff over here that you see so hold on let me get something out out that i can point with uh so the basic idea with this is that if you look at these lines so the foot the foot of a man goes here his head goes there and that would put him at 300 yards if his foot goes here and his head goes there, he's at 500 yards. If his foot goes here and his head goes there, he's at 800 yards, okay? Um, now, the, a great thing that I found that was extremely useful is the fact that they put this line over here, uh, this is basically the horizontal stadia line, which allows you to range estimate from the belt up, all right, or from the belt down. Uh, which, so basically, if, if the belt is over here and his head's up there, he's at 700 yards. If his belt is here and his head is there, you know, he's at 350 yards. So this was especially useful as I was trying to range estimate uh, people like this guy right here that's on the bicycle, right, going further out. Because when he's on the bicycle, you know, well, that guy's really hunched over. But if they're sitting a little bit more upright, uh, you can range estimate somebody that's sitting on a bicycle or that's sitting down. Um, so that's this that's extremely useful so um, now one of the things that I found because I was I was playing around with this scope yesterday and, and here's the thing you have to take it off the rifle and get out into the real world uh, and actually point this scope at real people and cars and trucks and airplanes and, 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 and ships so you, you got to get out into the real world to, to, to really test it out uh, it's got to come off the rifle um, so I've had it off the rifle for about a week and I have found a lot of really you know found out a real a lot of really interesting things through experimentation uh, I did a video yesterday where I was leading targets and when I was leading targets I found that basically I had to dial back uh, mostly in three power especially if I was trying to lead something like a car and the reason is because if you're trying to lead let's say a car and you have and you're fully zoomed in you, you, you can't track it so as soon as you pick up the car it's already it's already left your field of view so you have to basically zoom out so you can kind of see it a little further out here right now obviously this is one power so that's you know so you gotta be in the middle somewhere but you can see it when it's further out here right and then basically follow it in right uh, and then count how many seconds it takes the, the way we were tracking yesterday is basically from the center I'll go back to this so you can see so the way you you you, you lead something is as when it basically you start here and then you count two seconds so you want to how far does it get right so let's say it gets to this first line over here which is the 800 yard line so so let's say it takes two seconds to go there so now you know how fast it's, it's, it's so if it's going in that direction all you would do is just shift this over and as soon as your car passes this 800 yard line right here you pull the trigger and then the bullet and the target are going to connect here so that was yesterday when we're talking about leading the target if you haven't seen that video just just look it up just look up uh uh, primary arms m8 raptor leading targets and you will see that that video that i did on that so so anyway what i was saying is yesterday i had to zoom out to three power to four power uh in order to be able to to track the targets in but today as i was trying to 
um, do the auto ranging here. I found that uh, I pretty much needed to basically be zoomed all the way up to eight power because otherwise these lines are just too thin to see and, and the numbers up here are, are too small to actually read. So uh, I had, you have to zoom all the way up to eight power uh, in order to be able to, to, to use this feature. Uh, now that said, basically you want to get into an area like this where you've got like runners and joggers and bicycle people um, because I can, I, can, I can basically, I got more than a thousand yards ahead of me over there and I can range estimate people all the way out to the max capacity uh, of this auto ranger here. So I got, I was able to actually range estimate people uh, at the, on the 800 yard line, right? All the way out to 800 yards. Um, and then what I was also able to do, because there's, a, there's two ways that you can auto range off the size of a man, right? Because you can also match up their width to the little lines that you see over here. Oh, wind's blowing over here. So if you look at these lines over here, oops. there's these lines over here, right? Uh, so, so basically, if you can uh, match up the, the width of a man's sh uh, shoulders to that line, he's at 400 yards. 500 yards, 600 yards, 700 yards, 800 yards. And I was able to basically like size somebody up at 800 yards, both the full man, half the man, and then come over here and also uh, match up the width of his chest on this 800 uh, yard line over here. Uh, so this thing, it works. I mean, it works really good. Now, as far as the bullet drop feature, right? Because this is a, a bullet drop compensator that's built in here. I, I've done another video that basically focuses on how to do that. Um, what I tell, what, what, what I found that works for me is um, basically get yourself a 50 yard zero, right? Oh, right. Um, get, get yourself a 50 yard zero, and then take it out to basically 400 yards, right? First go to 300 yards, right? Then go to 400 yards. 400 yards is the, 300 yards is the is the top of that spine right there. 400 yards is that line uh, right there. So at 400 yards, you're gonna re-zero, okay? So now you have a zero that's accurate at 400 yards, which is the halfway point on the scale. 400 yards, okay? Uh, so basically, if you go back down to 50 yards, I mean, yeah, you might be a couple of inches off, but that don't make a difference. You're still gonna get chest shots. Uh, and then if you go out to 800, well, with five, basically you'd have to have like a 77 grain. Uh, and to get out to six, seven hundred, eight hundred yards is really pushing it. But there's people I've said they've been able to get. But but basically, if you guys zero at four hundred yards, and you've got a, a, a seventy-seven grain bullet that's accurate, uh, you can you should be able to at least put suppression fire uh, at eight hundred yards using this this bullet drop that's here. Okay, so but that's how you're gonna do it. You're gonna first zero at fifty yards, then re-zero at at four hundred yards. So that's kind of like the halfway point, and then you should be pretty close when you go back to 50 yards, and also uh, in the ballpark when you get up to 800 yards for, for at least for suppression fire. Okay. Um, so this is an excellent feature of this of, of this reticle, right? This this auto ranging reticle, uh, and especially when you with, with people because people are small and they move really fast. Like, so what, one of the things that. One of the practical things that I found by being out here, uh, trying to track, and I went to a different location where people were kind of going sideways too. People don't stay still very long, right? They tend to move, um, and uh, they tend to, especially if there's like trees and other objects out there. So you have a very limited amount of time to accurately range estimate and take your shot. Um, so having something like this that's built into your scope to help you quickly range estimate and take your shots uh, it is a big tool. Now I've done, now one of the excellent things about this scope is that in addition to having these features where you uh, basically range estimate off the size of a man, you can, you, you have a mill lines in here, right? Right, these lines here are one mil apart, right? That's 10 mils right there, okay? Um, you're able to range estimate off of other things of known sizes, right? So like the average door is 80 inches tall, uh, like average tractor trailer is 75 feet long, 13 and a half feet tall. Average car is six feet wide, about 15 feet long. So these are, you know, these are like, like stand, these, these uh, measurements you should kind of commit to memory. Um, and uh, basically, if you're gonna have a scope like this, right? You're gonna, if you're gonna have a scope like this, 
you're also going to have a pocket calculator okay so the, you're going to have a pocket calculator the pocket calculators are very light they're solar powered uh it will probably be one of the longest lasting electronic uh uh devices out there right so all the other you know electronic devices like i say you have the apocalypse you know the, the, the last electronic device to fail will probably be the solar powered pocket calculator okay so you can expect that you will be able to use a pocket calculator uh, through the apocalypse so you want so basically a pocket calculator uh, in conjunction with a mill scope right um, will allow you to accurately range estimate long after your range finder has failed right because range finders you know they, they use they basically use up a good deal uh, you know not, not a lot of battery power but it's going to run out of pat batteries right sooner or later and it's you know or it's going to get dropped or it's going to get broken uh because it's an electronic device it's going to fail i mean a pocket calculator i mean hell i've seen these things fall out of like two, two second story buildings and they, they they still uh uh they're still good you know um so so that so that, so this is definitely a very useful tool to have um and if you're going to get yourself a, an lpbo right make sure it has these capabilities make sure it has the capability of range estimating of bullet drop compensation uh, of wind holds don't just get an lpbo for the magnification right if, if if that's what your goal is just just get a just get a, a red dot with a magnifier right i got a, a ma i got a, a magnifier that you know a flip magnifier that goes all the way up to six power i think they're coming out with magnifier flip magnifiers that go all the way to out eight power so if all you're looking for is magnification, uh, the benefit of the magnifier is that you can quickly remove it uh, from the rifle and now you got a much lighter rifle. So at night when you're not going to be looking at distance, you just take it off the rifle, you got a lighter rifle and you put it back in the daytime when you think you might be looking at distance. So if all you wanted was magnification, yeah, red dot magnifier, way to go. If you're going to put an LPBO on your rifle, you want more than just magnification, right? You want the range estimation. You want the bullet drop, okay? You want the, the wind hold. Um, you know, you want to be able to lead targets, right? You want to be able to, uh, um, um, you know, to, to quickly range estimate off the size of a man. So, so, it, and also, um, if you're going to get, here's the thing, if you're, if you're going to get a, um, uh, especially if you're going to get a first focal plane scope, the whole point of the first focal plane scope, right, is, let's get that paper out, is that it gives you two different pieces of information, right? First focal plane scope, when you're in, when you're in uh, one power, you see a, a duplex reticle, which is really fast. You just get the X on the target, you take your shots, okay? When you're zoomed in, all right, then you, then you see the details, right? But then if you're gonna go back out, it gets rid of the information that you don't need and you go back to a duplex reticle. So, so that's the real benefit of the first local plane scope. It gives you the different information that you need at different magnifications and it gets rid of the information that you don't need, okay? Whereas the second focal plane scope, all that information is there. So, so you see the, the, the reticle, but when you, when you, but the, the thing is the reticle, the measurements are only only mean something, right? If you're in max magnification, when you zoom down to one power, those magnifications don't mean those. those sorry, those those um, uh, measurements on the reticle, they don't mean anything, right? You, you, you know, so so at best, the only thing that you can do with that information is maybe it kind of guides you to the center. Okay, so that's your second focal plane scope. Second focal plane scope, you have to be in max magnification. Uh, for the for the for, for the for the reticle, the measurements to mean anything, okay? Um, so so you know, for most people that are not going to take advantage of all these uh, range estimating features, a, a second focal plane scope is probably a better scope for them because it's cheaper and it, you know it, it does the job, right? If all they're interested is bullet drop uh, and um, and magnification, yeah, second focal plane scope will do that just fine. But if you want to be able to lead targets and, 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 and range estimate and do all that, yeah, now, uh, especially for, tra for, for, for leading targets, that's where I found yesterday that the first focal plane scope was really paying dividends. Because with the first focal plane scope, I was able to zoom back in like the three power 
uh, lead the targets, but the measurements that I took that you know was was the same, right? So it was the same when I was in eight power, three power, one power. It was all the same. Uh, when I tried to do that in the second plane, in the second focal plane scope, where I was trying to lead targets, I, I had problems because I was taking measurements in one magnification but zooming to a different one, so I could track the target. And now my measurement was no good anymore, right? Because because it was second focal plane. All right, so anyway, I, I talked about that in the other video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What I'm going to try and do now is I'm going to try and attach uh, some images, a quick video, uh, so that you guys can kind of see what I was seeing through the scope. And again, there's a there's a focusing problem, right? Because the camera wants to uh, focus on the lens or wants to focus on the distance. It doesn't want to focus on the reticle itself, which is what I want you guys to see. So thanks for watching. Drop some comments below. I'll talk to you all soon.